A few months ago, I made a video about some of my favorite hidden features in Blender. These are features that you can only access through shortcuts or that most people just don't know about because they don't get discussed very often in tutorials and things. Since then, I've thought up at least a dozen more really handy hidden features in Blender. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Before we start, I need to quickly tell you that I have a huge Christmas sale on over at my Gumroad page. You can save a massive 50% on all of my products until end of Christmas day using the promo code Xmas at checkout. That includes the Essential Topology Guide, which just got its first update, the Exterior Masterclass, which is getting its first update this week, and the Interior Masterclass, which already has two bonus modules and more coming soon. This is the biggest sale that I've ever had on my Gumroad page and it won't be matched for a long time, so I suggest you act now. I leave a link to my Gumroad store in the description. So the first features I want to talk about are all to do with the camera. Underneath the escape key on most keyboards, next to the number one, you'll find the tilde key. If you press that, it brings up this really handy little pie menu. For instance, if we want to go into the top view, you can just really easily switch to that or the right hand view. Or if we have an object selected, like say these stairs, you can go into view selected and it'll give you a close up of the object, or you can switch to the camera. This is especially handy if you don't have a number pad on your keyboard because you're using a laptop or something like that. It's a nice way just to be able to move around. If you press the tilde key and the shift key at the same time, you use first person controls. W, A, S, and D will move you forward, back, left, and right. If you left click it will confirm the camera position and if you right click it will snap the camera back wherever it was you can move down with q up with e if you hold down alt it will give you really fine controls and move it much more slowly if you hold down shift you move a lot faster and if you press the space bar it teleports which basically just moves you forward a certain distance what a lot of people don't know when you're in this mode is if you press tab, it'll actually enable gravity. You can see the camera's now moved to a default height here and we can move around our blender scene just like we're in a first person game. And if we go up these steps, you'll see it'll actually follow up the steps and you can even jump if you press the V key. Now the jump isn't particularly high. Your camera isn't exactly Michael Jordan at his prime, but if you go up to edit preferences and navigation, under gravity, you can actually change these numbers. So if we wanted to jump 10 meters, why not? Let's have a look at what this is like. It's if I press enable gravity and then press V. Now jump like we're on the moon. Another useful hidden feature is the ability to keyframe things automatically in real time. This is the auto keyframe button. And what it normally does is it just applies a keyframe to objects as you move them around. So if we move around the scene here and we have different frames, we can then play this back and it'll automatically move to wherever we just had things, which is pretty handy as it is. But we can actually turn auto keyframe on, press play, and then if we move things around the scene, right, like this, you can see we're actually adding keyframes all the time. And if we pause this and play it back, it should replay exactly what we just did. This is actually a really easy way to block out some very simple animations sometimes, and then you can go back and kind of refine their positions if you just want to figure out roughly where things are going to be. But what I really like about this is you can actually pair it with the last technique. If I select the camera and I have this enabled and I press play, and then let's go into first person mode again, you can see it's actually still keyframing the camera. So you can have a first person guy who's looking around and record it kind of like it's gameplay footage, which gives you a really nice base to work on. I do quite a lot of first person animations and I sometimes do this just to block out exactly where the character should be and what they should be looking at. Then I'll go back through and I'll actually add some sort of like nicer animations on top. But this gives us exactly what we've just had. I think this is a really nice technique. So in the last video like this, I briefly talked about the fact that you can basically use any field in Blender like a calculator or pretty much any field. For instance, if we're adding a cube into the scene here, we can make a cube which is three meters times three meters and put that in and it'll automatically calculate what that figure should be, which can be handy sometimes if you have really long winded numbers. 
What I didn't talk about last time though is the fact that you can even do unit conversions in here. Quite often when I'm using reference images, it won't be in metric, it'll be in uh, imperial, and I'll have to use Google or something to convert those, but you can actually just do those straight inside Blender. For instance, if I type that this is um, five feet and 10 inches, it will automatically calculate what that should be in meters. There's also a bunch of hidden options in the T menu. If you press T, it brings up these tools over here. And a great example of one of these, you can actually see these little dots in the corner. This means that you can hold down with left click and it will give you more options. One of my favorites is this one, scale cage. If we select this, what it basically allows you to do is scale things really easily and it will actually scale from the opposite point as the origin. So if we grab this point here, it will scale in as if the origin was over there. So we kind of scale towards this direction. We can do obviously the same thing over here. It's just a really nice way to quickly scale things without having to constantly move around 3D cursors and origins and things like that. It works with multiple objects as well. If you actually want to just kind of push everything towards the side over here, we can do that. It works in edit mode as well, which makes it a real life saver because it's much harder to move things around without using the 3D cursor and stuff, especially if you have objects that are made up of multiple parts. So down here, we have a option called add cube, which I don't see people using very often. So I take it most people don't know this exists, but you can actually just draw out a cube like this and add it directly into the scene. So if we just draw this onto here, you can hold down alt which will change where you're dragging from basically. Instead of coming from the corner like this, it'll come from the middle to resize. You can hold down shift and it'll keep it a perfect square instead of allowing you to squash it. And you can use increments on a grid basically by holding down control, or you can hold down all of those at the same time. And then you just drag up and that will make your cube or your rectangle. There's other shapes as well. There's uh, corn, cylinders, all sorts of different stuff in here. I've actually been using this a lot more often lately when I'm just quickly drafting out ideas and I want to put a lot of shapes roughly in place. Underneath that tool, you'll find this option here, which is for various carving tools. This works kind of like a Boolean, but it's much faster to set up than a Boolean because you don't actually need to add objects, then Boolean them, then apply the Boolean, then remove the original cutter object. You just basically draw under the mesh. So the primary uh, one is box cut. And it works using the same controls. You use Alt to change where you're dragging from. You use Shift to make it a perfect square. You use Control to snap it to a grid. And then once you leave Go, it will automatically Boolean that shape out. There's other options as well. You can use a polyline, which is basically where you just draw out any shape you want. Or you can use a circle. And it works really well. I use this not that often, but I am going to start using it more often in the future because it's actually a really handy thing to have. The next feature I want to talk about is something that I found by accident recently. I actually thought it might be a bug at first because I've never seen this happen before at all. If you're in edit mode, you probably know that you can press one to select different verts. You can press two to go into edge select mode, or you can press three to select faces. But what you might not know is that if you hold down shift, you can actually turn on all three different modes at the same time. So I can select a vert, I can select an edge, or I can select a face based just on basically where you are actually clicking. So if you click on here and then hold on shift and you click on this one, it'll select the edge. But you've also basically got the verts at the same time. And then we can select faces on top of that if we want as well. Sometimes when you're working in Blender, you're going to have objects which will have faces that are not aligned with the cardinal directions. They won't be on the Z, X or Y axis. For instance, if we just rotate this around, you might end up with something like this with a face that just points off in a weird direction. But what if we wanted to work on this face and we want to look at it directly? For instance, let's say we were going to use that uh, carve tool that we just used to cut a square in this. How would you actually align your camera so that you could do that easily? Well, there's actually a really simple way to do that. If you just select a face and you hold down shift and then seven to go into top view, it will align your camera automatically with this face and a lot of tools in Blender, such as this carve tool, will actually align itself with that as well. So let's say we wanted to make a cutout over here. We can add that in. And then if you look at this, you can see that it's actually perfectly aligned with that face. 
One of my favorite hidden features in Blender is the camera border. If you press Ctrl and then B, it gives you the option to draw a box. And wherever we draw the box, that's the only thing that will be rendered. Now, if you move out of camera view, you can see that we get everything back again. But as soon as we go into camera view, it's going to give us this. What I use this for most of the time is just to get rid of the background. I can just draw around the whole camera and see only what's inside the camera view. That makes it better to sort of align compositions and things like that. And it also means that Blender is not going to be rendering out anything that isn't in the camera view. But it means I can just quickly go back to seeing things exactly as they were. If you want to get rid of that, you can use Control alt b and that will get rid of everything. The other cool thing about camera borders is it shows you what will actually be rendered. So you can draw a box like this, for instance, and if we hit render, it will only render out this part of the image, but it will put it onto wherever it would have been in the original. So why this is handy, let's say that I was working on this scene, right? Control alt b to get rid of this. I was working on this scene and I render out an animation and I realized that actually this step should have um, graffiti on it. Instead of rendering out the entire project again, all I would have to do is put a border around here, add the graffiti onto the step and render out just that portion. And then I could composite back onto the top and I don't have to render out massive frames the whole time. I only have to render out this little part. Another similar feature to that is the clipping border. Now this doesn't work in rendered mode, which is why I've switched back to the solid view mode here. It actually has a very similar shortcut as well. If you use Alt and B and you draw a box, it will make everything else in the scene basically disappear. Everything gets clipped off and it will only show you this piece. And we can actually move out the camera view and see exactly what this is clipped to here. Now this has a few uses, at least for me. One of the things that I use this for all the time, you can cancel it by the way, just with Alt B again, and it'll get rid of everything. One thing I use it for though, is just to get an idea of exactly what's gonna be visible to the camera. For instance, if I draw something like this, I can see the parts of the mesh where I don't need to add any grass because they aren't visible to the camera. So I know that all of these parts over here, I can get rid of the grass because it's not gonna be necessary. Another thing that can be really useful for is if you're working on a mesh and you have parts of the mesh which are kind of getting in the way, you can just get rid of everything. And now you'll only see these parts isolated, kind of like a mask. And once again, we can just get rid of that by pressing Alt and B and it brings back the entire scene. Another good thing about it is while it's isolated, you're not calculating all that other stuff in the background. So if you have a really heavy scene, like this would be if I had all the grass turned on and things, it makes it a little bit more performant and a bit more lightweight and easier on Blender. So the final thing that I want to talk about today is Blender's really nice renaming tool. I have these stone steps here, and if you can see this in the outline here, it just has a regular name, but if I copy them, it gives me this nonsense. It gives me 0 0.002. But what about if I don't like that or if I work in a studio or something where that doesn't match the naming conventions that we use? Or maybe I've just got a load of assets named like this and I want to change them up. Well, you could do it individually by pressing F2 with the object selected. But what you can also do is press Control and F2, which will give you this rename tool, batch rename. Now you can select what type of things you're looking for. So you can say, okay, it's only gonna affect cameras or whatever. You can have it affect only the objects you have selected or all of your objects. And then you can find and replace things. For instance, if I wanna get rid of this 002 and just replace it with two, I can run that. And now it's renamed this to LOD 0.2. It's just a really nice handy little tool. Uh, I didn't use it the first about five years that I used Blender. Now it's something I use quite regularly when I end up with a massive amount of just really badly named stuff. Loads of objects called cube dot whatever. I just batch rename them instead. And so that was a dozen or so of my favorite little hidden tips in Blender that I don't think I've ever talked about before on this channel. If you have any hidden features in Blender that you like that I haven't discussed, leave a comment below. And while you're down there, why don't you check out the description with that link to my Gumroad store where you can get 50% off all of my products up until Christmas at midnight using the code Xmas. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you with the next video.